you so much for inviting me to talk about the wonderful topic of learning, one that engages many people. I am a learner, like we are all. I'm also a learning scientist. And as such, I have an agenda. Well, I have several. But today, I want to challenge simplistic and one-sided ideas about learning and the kind of polarized thinking that often comes along. One example. There is the idea, hold forth by several educators and scientists, that learning works best when, if given the, a problem, the learner herself explores and searches for an answer. We talk about active learning, discovery-based learning, and query-based learning. On the other hand, equally strongly put forward by others is the claim that learning works best if the teacher, one who knows the domain, tells, explains, and shows, and thereafter the student can practice. And there are utterances from one side about the other, that this is naive, this is old-fashioned, this doesn't work. But why should we choose one? Indeed, there is strong evidence that learning is most likely to be boosted when those two approaches are combined in well-composed ways, well-scheduled, smart ways. Indeed, there is strong evidence that activity, generative activity, is central to understanding and learning. But relevant things have to be generated. And you can prepare students for active activities and possible discovery by smart lecture elements. And then again, telling and explaining is often adequate because some benefits of discoveries will only occur when you receive an explanation of those discoveries. So instead of defending one position and criticizing the other, the energy ought to go to the real task and challenge for researchers and practitioners to find out how to compose those more differentiated and complex solutions. Another example. This involves frontline education and technology, which is central to my group's research. With so-called virtual reality-based environments, you can learn in novel ways. Imagine you should learn about glaciers. So instead of listening to a slideshow presentation, you can go there and experience for yourself. You can actually virtually visit a glacier. And there are the claims. This is learning of the future that is engaging and meaningful. So we can throw out old-fashioned methods, listening to people, reading boring books, this is more powerful. This is learning of the future. And on the other hand, the claims that virtual reality is not what school needs. This is what kids do outside of school. So more than ever, we need to work on well-established, redefined educational approaches. Listening to skilled people, reading, discussing, analyzing. That is the road forward. Virtual reality is no help in school. It's entertainment, not education. Again, this is a really meaningless debate. No doubt there are important assets, there are benefits with one approach as well as the other. The important and unsolved questions regard how to combine elements from the two approaches in smart and productive ways. And this is what we need to systematically investigate. And I wish that students, researchers, and teachers together set out to do this. Now. I say now because we all remember about the iPad that all of a sudden was just there in schools, in preschools. And so many teachers asking themselves, 
what shall we use this for? I want researchers, students and teachers to go first and lead the development and decide what is going to come over the threshold to the classroom. And think in terms of learning, not in terms of management, administration, not in terms of technology per se. Yeah, I would like learning research to walk before, not come behind and describe what happened to happen, which is a waste with taxpayers' money. So these were two longer examples. Now, some quicker examples of simplistic ideas about learning. It's all about engagement. If you're engaged, you will learn. If you're not engaged, you will not learn. Versus, it's about perseverance. Learning is hard work, making an effort. Learning is not fun, it's not about engagement. None is right. Or, learning is a group activity. You should focus on the group. Versus, the individual is at core of learning. You should focus on the individual. None is helpful. None is right. And the third and last one. It's all about the brain. If you're not studying the brain, you're not studying learning. Versus the brain has nothing to do with learning. If you study the brain, you're not studying learning. My message is that when we deal with issues of learning and education, we should leave all simplistic ideas about learning behind. They are threats to education and possibilities to have learning prosper because they stand in the way for the real, more complex, composed solutions. Simplistic pedagogical ideas sometimes have bulldozer force and can harm accordingly. And in Sweden, we are particularly vulnerable because our small population, comparable to a large European city, together with a strong consensus orientation, simplified one-sided ideas can have a tremendous impact. We have some current, really harmful ones. The idea that goal orientation is the solution. There is so much talk in Swedish schools about goals. Final goals, sub-goals, endeavor goals, fulfillment goals, competence goals, attitude goals. Each lesson, chapter, task has its goals. And there's an endless talk about goals. Related is the idea that evaluation is the solution. Even evaluation equals learning. I would say that 75% of all discussions at Swedish schools today among teachers, between teachers and students, among students concern evaluation. Evaluation matrices, evaluation criteria that are often very abstract and general. Instead of talking about tasks and content, you talk about how to evaluate students' attempts at arguing about that content. Content that has become secondary. Another thing about simplistic ideas about learning is that they are often ideologically colored. I want learning to work this way. And they can be personally colored. I would have done better with another kind of school. My plea to all people who have power over present and future learners is that we examine ourselves. If I put forth a strong claim about learning, what are the basis for it? And most important, is there ideology behind? I want to give cred to those practitioners and learning scientists who have been part of strong one-sided movement, invested much in a simplistic idea of learning, and then at some stage examined evidence, reflected and backed off. All cred to them. I just said evidence. 
And I want to follow that up during my last clause now. What should we do? And with we, I mean teachers and researchers. Well, we should back off from simplistic ideas about learning, from ideology, and from abstractions. Instead, we should go close to learning and teaching situations and explore them. Go close, be concrete, and be creative. So create those novel, more differentiated, composed solutions and test them. Compare them. Compare them to existing good practices. Compare them among themselves. It's really important to compare. Why? Because students' time at school and teachers' time is limited. So when you choose one approach, you discard others. And that's what is, why it's so important to ask, what is the benefit with this approach? How does it compare in terms of learning to other relevant alternatives? from a learning perspective, remember. So it's not sufficient to say, hey, here is some technology. It can be used to teach kids about genetics, so let's use it. Because that's not fair to learners. You have to ask, how does this compare in terms of learning to relevant alternative approaches? So my take home message. We have responsibilities towards learners, and therefore, three things. One, we should not simplify what they do. Not put forth simplistic ideas about learning. Two, we should be creative. And create novel, well-composed learning and teaching met methods and test them towards alternatives towards one another, so that, three, we can truly say to learners that the activities we make them engage in, the instruction they get, are, from a learning perspective, good ways to spend their time. This we owe learners. Thank you. <laughs>